Welcome back to All the Work, my restoration of my 1988 Ski Supreme. I am Joe, a stay-at-home dad who got this boat about 14 years ago. Used it for five awesome years, and then it sat around for nine years. I knew there were issues with the boat. I knew there was some cracking. I assumed that the stringers were broken, but I held on to it, thinking that someday I was going to get it going again. Last summer, I decided to take on a full restoration of it. I was inspired by Ron Tannis's A Rare Bird series, and I tried to follow his steps as much as possible. I ripped out the driver's side floor, I ripped out all the flotation foam, I cleaned it all up, I pulled out probably about 600 pounds of wet flotation foam that had been in there for nine years or more, I repaired a large crack under the driver's side, and I did all this with zero boat fixing experience. I learned everything I could on YouTube, and I have set out in this all the work video series to show what it takes to do a project like this. Not like those how-to videos that you see where they get it done in a nice little tight clip. I am showing every minute of work all the way through, all my mistakes, all my uh, victories, and displaying it all with me dubbing over telling you what I'm doing is kind of a video blog for you to see. Enjoy. Now, last summer I got all the major repair work done and reinstalled the engine. This summer, I am focused on building it back up while adding a bunch of modifications. I want to improve this boat. I figure if I'm going to do this project and I'm going to tear it all the way apart and break it all the way down, that I want to build this thing up being as sick as possible. I'm adding boat cleats where I didn't have any before. I'm adding headlights. I'm adding trash and recycling bins. I'm adding water ski storage. I'm adding sea deck. I'm adding LED lights. I'm adding house lights. Just as many cool features as I can cram into this 19-foot boat. At this point, I am prepping to paint. I have done all my fairing. I routed out all the old stress cracks. This thing sat outside for nine straight years. Uh, five of those out in Utah just getting hammered with the sun. It had a cover on it, but it didn't matter. And there was significant stress cracking on it. So I've already gone through and I routed those out. Um, and now I've done the fairing. And I've sanded the fairing. You see those little green dots on the nose. And I got this thing smooth and slick looking. And it just looks like a, a beautiful shell ready to get painted. Now before I paint, uh, a couple things had to happen. I cleaned out the garage. I didn't do the greatest job uh, cleaning out the garage. I didn't dust the ceilings, which uh, Andy from Boatworks today suggested that I do. But I did power wash the floors and, and just clean it out as much as I could. Uh, another thing I did is I parked the boat in the garage sideways here, something that my wife has strictly prohibited me from through this project. She likes to park in the garage. However, for the painting step, I finally got my way, and I am totally in the garage. So I want to do a really good job of masking. I put the plastic all the way around the boat. I am only painting the upper deck of the boat. I do not need to paint the blue. The blue was redone before I bought it, and it looks fantastic. So I am just painting the white, the upper deck of the boat. Now, what you've been watching me do prior to this was going around and just cleaning and cleaning and cleaning the boat. I had some rags that I used with soapy water to start, and then I diluted those and did a couple rounds with rags uh, with just water to get the soap out of there. And then I went around the whole boat with the total boat de-waxer and surface prep to get it really clean. And then the last thing you just saw right there was me going around the boat with a tack cloth. Now I am mixing up the primer and getting it ready to get in the boat. Now, I've never painted a boat before. I did do a couple summers as a painter, so I do feel a little bit confident that I can do this. I am using the Alexial Yacht Coatings, um, all their stuff. This is the primer that I'm using, the 442 primer. Um, I am rolling this out because I watched a video that Andy at Boatworks Today did where he used this rolling additive and it came out amazing. I was going to spray everything, but then just the masking of the garage and being able to clean it up to be able to, to be able to spray just seemed a little too daunting. And so I decided not to go that route. And after I saw the, the rolling additive video from Andy at Boatworks, I was like, oh yeah, I can do that for sure. So here I am uh, rolling out my primer. Now this is interesting because the boat or the deck of the boat is inside and outside. So I decided to start on the inside and move my way around from the dash all the way around the inside then move over to the outside and get through it. 
and because this is the primer, I know that it's all going to get covered up. So it's a good place to start, right? And I think I figured out the right way to do it the first time. I was really happy. You're starting inside, move around the inside. I do have a couple of lap mark places, but I try and keep those as, as tight and concealed as possible. Such as, as I come around the rail of it from the inside, then I have to go back around the outside. I try and do those laps in places where the C deck is going to go. So even if there is a little bit of a mark where the dry paint and the wet paint come together, the C deck's going to cover it up and you'll never know. So actually this first round of primer went great. You see, I just go around, do my painting, and head inside, just victory. And then I remember, oh yeah, I gotta come outside and I gotta clean up my brushes and do all that stuff. This is where having done a uh, couple summers of painting houses comes in handy. Um, I open up the garage door, get a little air in. The 442 primer was nasty. Smelled really, really bad. And even though I was wearing a respirator, I could just tell that the stuff was really powerful and potent. So I get the roller and my paint tray cleaned up walk around the boat a few more times, kind of admire my work, and then I set out to mask off the taillights on this thing. At this point, I am pretty sure that I still have fairing down in the taillights, <clears throat> and that I am gonna primer over where I fi uh, fixed the holes from the old swim deck, and then paint over those. I do a little more research um, a little further on in this and realize that I'm not going to be able to paint over those. And then I'm just sanding out the primer and the fairing so that I can just gel coat and make it look like there's taillights on the back of the boat where I filled in these holes. So not the greatest camera angle here, but I am back there masking off where I repaired the holes for the old swim deck so that I can potentially primer those, thinking that I'm going to paint them at this point, but that's not really going to happen. So we'll clean up. That is round one of primer. Very exciting time for me. I had uh, told a lot of people that once I painted this thing, that every step after that is moving in the right direction. And it was true. Now primer is great because you really only need to give it about four hours before you can do the second coat. Or maybe it was even less than that. I, it's tough to tell. This is now a month ago when I shot this video to now when I am narrating it. And so I am prepping for my second round of primer. Uh, I'm going to go through the same order of operations. I'm going to start on the inside of the boat, go all the way around the middle, work my way to the outside. I have a ladder set up on the far side of the boat to get in and out with, being very careful not to touch the sides or in general screw it up. So I am going to lap through with a whole second round of primer, and I'll leave you a little bit of a music. Enjoy. <laughs> six of the boat build I finished primering yesterday two coats of primer today I am tackling 
Finishing up the L seat, the passenger L seat modification situation. Uh, I didn't get good adherence to the 1708 on the back side of the seat. And so I am having to cut away a bunch of fiberglass that didn't hold to the to the plastic sheeting. Uh, right now that's what I'm doing. I'm using my little Fordham tool to make kind of accurate cuts. And so I'm going to cut that away and then I am going to re-fiberglass over with the 1808 matting and get this thing sealed up and strong. There's a good view of how much I really cut away here. You can see the dark section, that's the fiberglass that's still stuck to the seat. And where it's lighter, that's what I cut away. So one half of the seat, I almost cut off all of it. And the other half, the way it's facing you right now, is a little more still stuck to the seat. So now I'm just going to sand it up, get it ready for actual fiberglassing, and get this seat finished up. So there is one sheet of fiberglass on the seat. Now I am turning my attention to the swim brackets while that fiberglassing is curing. I still am not sure how I'm gonna mount the removable swim brackets that I picked up. So now I am just sitting down, fabbing it up, making some measurements while I'm waiting for that fiberglass to cure. I kind of took care of that pretty quickly and now I am back out adding a second sheet of 1808 to the seat to beef it up. Now I'm putting more material on the back of the seat. When I fabricated this, it was screwed down with four screws. There was nothing on the back of the plastic sheet. So would it have been better to not add any fiberglass to the back of the, the seat and just rely on what's on the front or maybe just do chop strand on the back of the seat? Probably, maybe, I'm not totally sure. It's gonna work out great. Now that I got the second sheet of fiberglass on the L seat, I'm pulling the boat back out into the driveway to add a guide coat and do some sanding. Now this guide coat thing is something I'd never heard about. It's basically this little black powder that you rub all over the boat so you can see any little imperfections while you're sanding. The stuff actually works great. Unfortunately, it makes a god-awful mess all over the uh, painting drop cloths and my clothes and everything else. But it does make it good for sanding. Now, I am sanding here with 150 grit sandpaper. I am sanding down the primer. I have two coats of primer. I'm sanding down the primer to get it smoothed up before actual painting. Here I go. Here I am moving back to the L seat. I am putting the chop strand mat over the edges of the seat. I'm lapping all the way around with the chop strand so that I get one continuous shell 
of fiberglass around the seat itself. Again, I don't know if I need that, but it seems like the right thing to do so that I get the best kind of water resistancy and make it as sturdy and complete as possible. Sorry about the camera angle there, but I did fix it, bring it back over. You can see the shadow of the sun is very, very close to where I'm working. And so I'm working fast trying to get this done before the sun gets there and heats up its resin too much where it's almost unworkable. I definitely rushed through that, did a little bit of a sloppy job, but I know that I'm going to gel coat over it and be able to sand it and clean it up after that. So I got three sides of the seat done, uh, back to sanding on the boat, and then I will flip that L seat over one more time and finish the chop strand here shortly. The beauty of the guide coat is that once you've sanded it, it's gone. You can see from the rail there that that's a nice bright white. So as you go through, you get a really good view of it. Once you get the black off, you've sanded it down smooth, you're good to go. the L seat, uh, the fiberglass has had time to set up a little bit. I flip it over, get working. Right here the camera falls forward and I am missing all this footage as the camera slowly falls down the ladder that I've got it set up on. Fantastic video here. And we are back. You can see here I am fiberglassing in the direct sunlight, which is not optimal, so I am just hustling. The stuff is kicking super hard, uh, the resin is curing, my work time on the resin is short if almost non-existent, but I get it done and I get back in the boat and keep sanding. This time I just do a short session of sanding because that resin and the fiberglass just sets up so hard in the sun that it dries almost immediately and so I do my little setup here in the garage so I can gel coat in the shade and I'm going to gel coat this thing and once I've gel coated it then I can let it sit for a long time and not worry about it and I can do all the sanding and the trimming of the excess fiberglass that I need to get this thing cleaned up and looking good. So you see that it almost took no time at all to gel coat the front and back of this thing and then right back to sanding. Here we go. With sanding complete, it is time to clean up and go pick up the voice. day and I have decided to completely remove all the plastic sheeting that was masking off the boat. It got super dusty in the whole sanding process and I probably should have just taken it off before I started sanding but I didn't. You see the water coming out of the garage right there that's because I've pressure washed the floor again. I figure pressure washing the floor is like the easiest thing that I can do to keep the dust down in the garage and make the best painting situation possible and it's easy. You see those panels that I have out? I'm doing little test sections of paint on those so that I'm confident with what's going on in the boat. I've never painted a boat before. I've never used this primer before. I've never used this finishing paint before. 
So I'm learning as I go. And I also have this little dream of adding some sparkle to the boat. Uh, I bought this metallic flake stuff off of Amazon, and I'm going to try and do some metallic flake stuff up on the nose of the boat uh, somewhere towards the end of the process. So that was a little test bed for that too. The bow is back out in the driveway. I have a little bit more sanding to do. I'm going to use those little foam pads under my sandpaper for doing all of the beveled edges. Um, another thing I'm doing is I'm finally putting all the screws around the deck into the floor of the boat, something that should have been done probably well before this. However, here I am getting to it. doesn't matter. I am putting uh, 5200 in all the holes so that I don't have these holes that are leaking into the floor. Again, I don't know if that's a huge deal, but I want to do it because I, this is a boat that used to be full of all wet flotation foam. So I'm doing everything I can to seal this thing up so I have a nice dry boat, a light boat, a fast boat for the rest of the years that I'm using it. here of all the rims of the boat where you can see that the guide coat is still on where the rim or the, the beveled edge is so I was able to get all the flat spots nice and smooth and cleaned off of the guide coat but anywhere where there's one of these little uh, edges you can see where it's still black and that's what I'm going around now with the, the sandpaper and the foam block getting those out of there this ends up taking way longer than I expected. I thought I'd be able to just blast through and do this all by hand. However, it proves to be a little bit more time consuming than I wanted. And I, I don't think I'm gonna get done in time. One thing I haven't mentioned up until this point is the boys are still in school for another day or so. This is the last week of school for sure for the boys. So once they are out of school, then there's no more daytime boat work, just a little bit of nap time work, and then everything moves to the night. So I'm definitely trying to get this thing done before they're done with their school. So as I go around here doing it by hand, it's taken absolutely forever. At some point, I'm just going to give up and get back to the orbital because I need to. Unfortunately, the session that I did with the orbital sander around the bow is not on video. I think the, the memory card just filled up on me. But you can see on the left side of the bow where you couldn't see me working before is now all cleaned up. There's no more guide coat um, because I've done it with the orbital a little bit. I, I think I used the orbital just very like lightly and then went back over and finished it by hand. So the other side of the bow took me about half the time uh, as the first side that I tried. So now I've pushed the boat back into the garage. I am cleaning it at this point. Uh, I have still a ton of that masking tape around the edge. This is where I realized that if I leave the masking tape on the boat too long out in the sun, it gets all gooey and nasty. And this, this right here turns out to be 45 minutes of work just trying to get this masking tape off of the rubber rub rail and it's all gooey and it's sticking to my fingers and I'm using a razor knife and just a miserable part of the process because I knew that if I had just taken the masking tape off when I was done painting the primer, none of this would be happening. So once again, me trying to save time cost me more time in the long run. All part of doing something for the first time. Part of the learning process and another lesson of just do it right the first time and you'll be all set. Here I have grabbed the indoor vacuum cleaner and I'm using that to clean out all the gook from the rub rail. Don't tell Amanda. And now I am masking off above the rub rail because I'm going to try and use some chemical and get all the goop off of the rub rail right now. However, what I find is the goop is a daunting task. I just do the best I can do a quick one. But I am going to need to come back at this later on and clean it up the rest of the way. Basically, my decision is 
cleaning that goop up doesn't change this boat's ability to be on the water and so I can leave it a little bit dirty with some of this tape on just mask it up and get this thing painted and someday in the later future I'll get it fixed so now I am cleaning the boat officially for the first coat of paint I'm using the total boat surface prep and de-waxer this stuff is great cleaning absolutely everything cleaning up really really good no dust no gunk hopefully and get this thing ready for the paint painting steps after that I am adding lighting around the garage I realized when I was doing the primer that I didn't have the best lighting and all the, the key points especially at the back of the boat that wasn't very good for me so I just took a bunch of these lights hung them up around the garage and lit up the boat I don't have a great spot to film from for this so I'm kind of just doing the best I can so that I can show the true amount of hours it goes into this not to show how to do this Masking the lower half of the boat this time I am using the blue tape so I don't get all that gunk in there I also lower the nose down which makes a giant difference when it comes to painting the top who knew that was just a silly thing I realized like oh I could drop this nose down and have much better access to it versus standing on buckets and trying to uh, paint from there so that was helpful so I use the blue tape to mask around I have a little bit of that good extendable plastic sheeting left and then I have to just use some plastic I find around the garage to finish it off around the nose because I didn't want to go and buy more materials. So a little more cleaning, a little more prep work, get this thing ready. look like a super sweet spiraling camera effect however it's just my camera falling forward as I go around and add the plastic sheeting around the boat there it is stood back up now you can see the boat it is ready for paint three little dots on the nose of the boat those are fairing that's showing through after I did the sanding of the primer now should I have gone through and done another full coat of primer and then re-sanded that maybe um, however like that spot on the nose the sea deck's gonna cover that so I wasn't too worried about it all in all after I finished this there are probably two spots that I wish I had primered again and then re-sanded However, they are on the driver's side rail just above the rub rail and after a few weeks, you don't even notice them. I haven't seen them in a long time. So at the end of the day, I do think that I'm okay and that I did the right thing moving to paint after two rounds of primer and then sanding. So here I am prepping my paint, final round of cleaning, and in the next video, I am going to get to painting this bad boy.